evening. Switch Good back. evening, everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk Racing. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving Day, we're ready to get our bellies full. How about you? I'm ready. Family's in town, ready to go. I'm oh, just checking. Never mind. What, are you trying to figure out how to switch it back and forth? No, 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 no. I know you got that figured out. I'll just go over here. And... Do you have an intro to it? No, I'll add that later. Oh, okay. We just do it all live. Makes makes it for a lot easier. There's the intros need to be re-kicked there. Let's talk racing. Hey, this is Patrick Star Foley. Oh, my favorite doctor to be. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and my race car the driver that is. <laughs> yes, exactly. How you doing tonight, Patrick? Doing pretty well. How about you? Oh, all right, me and uh, Matt Mullins are holding down the fort tonight since it's uh, Thanksgiving. Give everybody else time to relax. How's your stuff coming along? Uh, it's rolling along. Getting excited for Thanksgiving tomorrow. That's cool though. You guys got the uh, the all star cast in the in the booth tonight to do the show. <laughs> there you go. You know I came you out of retirement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how did, I know you were telling me that you were having another meeting with the school. How did that come? Um, it went. It went pretty good. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they're being a lot more flexible with me than, than I think I originally anticipated them doing. And, uh, you know, my original deadline for letting them know if I'd be going back to school was Halloween. And obviously we're coming up on Turkey Day tomorrow and uh, still working with them. So I really, you know, they, uh, they know I've kind of got my once-in-a-lifetime shot here. I'm still working on things on the racing end. But they... Uh, they're kind of leaving it up in the air right now, trying to see how the pieces fall together, and maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll have a final decision on it. Cool. Now, for those that don't know, Patrick is in school for medical training. Uh, go ahead and give the rest of the info and all that for everybody. Yeah, so my background is probably a little bit different than most, uh, most guys out there racing. I graduated from Harvard in 2012 and uh, made it a year and a half into medical school. And then it got the opportunity to run some K&N races uh, after winning the Peak Challenge to the driver search that Michael Walker Racing and Peak Motor Oil put on. So they gave me uh, one race deal to do that, ended up finishing fifth in my first start. And then we got a couple more races this season and, you know, got a win, got a pole, got all top ten finishes. So really took a small opportunity and capitalized on it. And uh, been working pretty much since... Since the last K&N race, I ran back in May to put a uh, full-time deal together for next season. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot of moving pieces to it right now, but it's been the ride of a lifetime, and it's gotten to be really cool people along the way like you guys. So, having a blast. Well, isn't he nice tonight? He must have taken his yeah. nice pills. It's Thanksgiving. It's time to be <laughs> thankful and, and be good, nice. Good, good mood, man. I'm feeling optimistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I need an appendectomy. How about you? <laughs> uh, um, uh, are you looking to go east or west for, for the K&N series? Uh, pretty much all options are on the table right now. I mean, I've, I've met a lot of people this year and everything ranging from K&N, ARCA, truck stuff, even some of the, uh, I guess it's Xfinity now. It's not it's not the Bush series anymore. you got to get used to the name change every couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to, to pursue every option where there's, you know, there's some opportunity there, and uh, like I said, there's still a couple things on the table, so I'm not sure which way it'll go yet. But, but you are going to go finish your, your medical degree and pretty much try to become a doctor, correct? Yeah, well, one way or another. I'm not sure how all the pieces will fit together yet. Um, well, you know, when, all the meetings are when exactly yeah. I'll go back to school or be able to race and go to school, and, you know, obviously... Your medicine is such a cool field, and, and I ultimately, on a, on a school side or academic side, I love the challenge of it, and I think it's pretty cool the way that I've been able to tie you know, my medical interest to racing. I have uh, celiac disease, so I'm one of those guys that has to eat gluten free, and I've had that since uh, 2010, and we've been working with the Celiac Foundation trying to raise some awareness for that and kind of tying it into the racing because there's so many people that pay attention to it, so... Uh, one way or another, there'll be something medically related kind of going on, whether I'm racing or not. Cool. What um, now, uh, doctor? I believe is what you said you were going for. What field are you trying to go to? Uh, I'm interested in a couple of them. I really like. I uh, my major in college was was neurobiology, so I'm interested in that. I also like ophthalmology with the eyes, and I uh, spent a lot of time, you know shadowing some doctors in the field and this year I've been doing research in, in ophthalmology and 
those kind of seem the most appealing right now. Usually the more people get into med school and like get to work in the hospital and spend day to day doing things like that, you kind of figure out which one fits you best. So kind of undecided right now, but maybe my favorite skill though is, uh, is racing behind the wheel of a stock car. So. <laughs> Yeah, but if you ever become a medical doctor, that, that's going to be kind of. I, I know you got to try to do both, and I'm glad to see you trying to do both. But um, that's probably going to take a little sidestep to the racing or, or to the medical field here soon. Well, I, I well I think he would make a really good niche for himself. You know, be out there racing. Somebody crashes and it looks like it might be really bad. He can hop out, go over, and take care of it. <laughs> and and they talk about with Formula One, and the, they you know have all their own people that go with everywhere. Here you got a driver that's ready to do everything all at once. Well, uh, you got the driver. If I have a full season deal, I'll be at every track at all times. So. There, there, there you go. Well, Dr. Jerry Punch. You know, so. There's so many ways you can spin it. You know how it is. Anything to make it look good. T tell us a little bit on how you got into the Peak Challenge um, and how that all came about. Um, I, we, we actually sat down here not too long ago and they aired it and watched all the episodes. I think they had them all on in one day, so we sat there and watched them. But tell us a little bit how you got involved with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a cool deal that they came up with. Uh, you know, I guess the only other thing that, that's kind of similar to it is Roush did the Gong Show. I guess that was quite a few years ago now, but it still didn't quite have this format. Uh, everyone who wanted to enter it, you had to put a video online saying why they should pick you to be the next MWR development driver. It had to be 90 seconds long, include your resume in it, whatever you wanted to do. And they had over 700 people enter the contest, and they picked nine of us to come to Charlotte. And we went to the big track over here. It was a three-day competition where we did everything from the super speedway, the little quarter-mile midget track that they have, uh, the road course in the infield, we did a fake TV commercial where Danica Patrick was our coach. You know, they had Brian Vickers, Clint Boyer, Mark Martin was out there. And it was, it was really cool to get to work with these guys that you grew up watching on TV. And, you know, now they're there in person interacting with you, giving you advice on, on you know, how to wheel a 3,200-pound stock car. And uh, after the three days of competition, I guess they, they saw something in me that they liked. Everyone there was, was really fast. And, uh, you know, it, it came down to a couple guys, and I think, I kind of outshined them a little bit on on the media side of things and was able to back it up with, with what we did behind the wheel and picked me as a winner and, and like I said, got a one-race shot with Bill McAnally in the K&N series to, you know, back up what it was they would do during the contest and, and finished fifth and went on from there. So not too many opportunities like that come up anymore and, you know, I consider myself really lucky I was able to take advantage of it. Well, and, and Ted... That experience of going through all that, I mean, um, they literally turned you loose with a, a, a race car and told you to go do donuts and go out and um, pretty much try to trash it. Well, you know, what kind of, what was that all kind of like, you know? Yeah, I think the most, the, probably the craziest thing that happened the whole time we were there is on the third day of the competition, that was the last day we had the track run, and we had to go run the mile and a half. And everyone who had been there was, you know, all short track racers. I grew up. You know, running short tracks in Florida, I started in pure stocks, worked my way up to late models. Uh, you know, me, my dad, and my buddy Anthony, that's my whole pit crew. And I, I'm used to the short track scene and never been on a mile and a half, never seen one in person really. And uh, it was raining the whole night before, and we caught a window that, that morning to, to run the laps on the big track. And we were supposed to go out there in a van and then follow an instructor and then ride in a two-seater. Like, you're supposed to build up to going out there and driving by yourself. But they only had the track that day. They only had the TV guys that day. So they said, we're going to put four sticker tires on this car. We only have time for you to go out there on three laps. Go as fast as you possibly can. And <laughs> everyone kind of freaked out when they said that because no one had that experience to go out there. And, you know, the petty cars aren't quite as fast as, you know, a real, you know, nationwide car, cup car. So you didn't know if you could hold it wide open, if you just burnt the throttle, what you had to do. And uh, that was probably the biggest rush ever, is just getting out on that track and laying it all on the line with no experience or, or build up to it. So uh, it was it was a lesson in learning how to adapt really quickly, and uh, definitely a challenge compared to everything I've done before that. <laughs> what um, you, you know, you you just said um that you thought that you shined through the the, the media thing. What was it like working with Danica? How was how was that going? That was cool. I mean, I've never, I never met her before that, and obviously, someone with with that much star power is kind of 
intimidating not only to like meet a person like that, but then have to perform right in front of them. And they had it set up. It was like a fake, you know, commercial studio, and they had all the cameras and the, the bright lights on you, and uh, they had a little teleprompter for you to read. It was basically the same script. I mean, if you ever seen a peak commercial with her in it, it was one of those commercials. And uh, you had to walk up, pick up the peak bottle, and she was really good with understanding, you know, all the technical aspects of what goes into a commercial and how to posture yourself and put, you know, the right intonation on certain words. And, um, you know, from that perspective, she, she's a master at, at making it work. And I think that's why she's so successful with the sponsors in the sport and able to bring that kind of media attention to us. So once you, uh, you know, you, racing, you want to go out there and win every race, lead every lap, and, and that's kind of what you need to have at your core as a racer. And, and I've been learning to keep moving up and keep excelling at these higher levels. You need to have a lot of what someone like Danica has is that, that knowledge to, to bring stuff together for the people who are investing in you and paying for the racing. Right. You got to take care of those sponsors. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, now, can you give us a little hint on this year? What's going on? What are you going to be doing? Um, uh, do you have any idea yet? Or <laughs> I wish I could tell you, man. It's not at this point. It's not even that. It's still a secret. It's just I really don't know uh, w which way it can go. I've been working at Michael Walsh Racing for about the last six months now as a marketing intern. Those guys, you know, obviously did a great job for him. I still have a relationship as you know, a, a development driver, and they kind of took me under their wing and uh, teaching me the ropes of, of the business side of things. And, uh, you know, we've talked about a lot, Roger, trying to you know, land the right deal and, and bring the right people together. And I can tell you one thing for sure, I'll be running my late model in, in Florida, probably going to try to make it to be smarter for a couple of the big preseason races. So I know I'm definitely going to make that happen. And uh, right now it's still it's still up in the air if I'm even going to have something together next year. But I promise you I'm working 24-7 on it. Well, I'll bet you are. I, I mean, guy in your position, I would be too. So, But don't forget that medical career. No, nope, absolutely not. You know, I, no matter what, I'm going to keep uh, keep every option open that I can for as long as I can. And I consider myself lucky that I'm able to, uh, to take two things I'm passionate about and do both of them. <laughs> Now, did you have, talk about your late model? Did you try to go to uh, Myrtle Beach and run that race? No, no. I, uh, so the Myrtle Beach race, those were late model stocks, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so I definitely I watched that one on run. They had a crazy car count for that. Was, did, how many cars did they end up getting there to try to qualify? 40. 40 something, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's great for, for a show like that. So I run super late models down in Florida. You got the offset chassis and... Yeah, yeah, I'll send you full-blown type of deal. And uh, they ran the Governor's Cup, I guess it was this past weekend now, and I was really trying to make it down for that. They pulled about 40 cards for that race, too. So I'm happy to see on the, on the short track level some of these big end-of-the-year shows are getting good car count. Yeah, and Myrtle Beach usually does. Um, uh, Martinsville usually does. Um, where's the other one? Can't even think about it. Nashville well, used the, to. The, the, the heat race at the Langley. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Hampton Heat. That's middle of the year. Oh, well. He's talking end of the year. The end of the year stuff. Well, they're still running, what, at South, uh, South Side, I think. No. No, I think everybody's some, some done. Myrtle Beach is, everybody's already, oh, Myrtle Beach has got a turkey race. No, that was this weekend. And Kinley, Kinley had a race. Kinley today. has a race this weekend coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but super lights, they really haven't caught on in this area, and I wish they would, because they're, they're, <laughs> they're a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a blast to drive. I mean, when you're hooked up, it's like you're glued to the racetrack, and if yeah. you're off a little bit, you know, it feels like you're having the biggest piece of junk in the world. So, I'm interested to see, you know, the, the old Hooters Pro Cup division. Now they switched to, I guess it's going to be the Cars series next year, and they, they're going to be have a Super and a Pro Late Model division. And I know they run in, you know, a lot of tracks in the, the Carolina area. So it'll be interesting to see if, if that catches on. I know they're going to pay a really good purse and. I know that the past series sometimes runs up here too, so it'll be interesting to see how all that pans out. Yeah, yeah, that'll be, and and those are two good series that you know to go play with, you know, to go, you know, go have a good time in in um, running in them. Um, so you you're definitely going to bring your super late up if you really don't get the K and N deal done and and come up and play a little bit or. Yeah, it, it depends which way it goes. If. It, uh... If I'm lucky enough to uh, to get a deal together and be full time racing, I'll still be up here in, in North Carolina. I'd love to get my super 
uh, you know, up here and run a lot of these tracks. I'm about to go to, you know, Hickory a lot this year, Tri-County, and they all look like, you know, really fun places to race and uh, just haven't had the opportunity to, to come up here. And flip side, if it doesn't quite work out, I have the, the school option to, to go back to right now and be able to run my late models just, just down there in Florida. Just down there in Florida. Yeah, have you ever made it up to Langley up here? You guys ran k and but I didn't know if he ran it up here or not. Yeah, no, no, I haven't been to Langley before. Need to make it up here. It's it's a pretty good track to run. Yeah, put it on my bucket list of uh, race tracks to make a trip. We've had a lot of a lot of my friends have come up here and run, and they will tell you it, it's not an easy track. Uh, uh, you've heard of Timothy Peters, right? Oh yeah, yep. Yep, he's come here and run a couple of times, and he's run pretty good. But it, it is still a track it, that has to be reckoned with, uh, especially on the longer races. The tires will wear out. You got to figure out how much of that tire you want to waste. The track itself is very flat. Uh, a lot of the guys that have raced there and go out some other place, you'll find they'll be in the top five or top ten of wherever they go to race at. Uh, Greg Edwards, he went down to Myrtle Beach. We were talking about that. He finished uh, second place there. So uh, it, it's a lot of a lot of people come there and go. Denny Hamlin used to race there. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that sounds like like a racetrack that I would really like. Uh, you know, out at out at Irwindale this year when I ended up winning that K and N race, tire management was such a big part of it. I mean, those guys run 150 straight laps, no pit stops. You know, you only start the race with four tires. So, um, you know, any track where it falls off a lot, where it wears the tires out, you have to manage. You know, not only just trying to save the tires, but keeping the balance of the car right. I mean, you could protect the right front all night long. But if you lean on the right rear too hard, you're going to end up being crazy loose by the end of the race. So, yeah, that's something coming up in racing. My dad raced when, when I was a kid, and he always taught me, taught me how important it is to, you know, drive the car so that you can keep it balanced. So that kind of track sounds like a lot of fun. And, and that's what it is, keeping the balance and, and, you know, keeping your tire wear down to a management. But getting set up for the, the track is probably the most difficult. You know, two totally different corners. And you 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 won't never run, you know the two corners the same. So it's a pretty cool track. Yeah, sounds like a blast. Need to, need to figure out a way to to get me in a late model up there sometimes. Dave. <laughs> you guys got any connections for me? Got a lot of connections just finding a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, uh, yeah, um, I can definitely get you into some starting parkers. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not what you want to do. No, not quite. But if uh, if two laps around there is as much fun as you guys are making it sound, maybe it'd be worth it. Well, most <laughs> most of the guys that I've seen that go out there and do the start and park, they actually get about ten to twenty laps in before they actually pull in. Um, simply because I think the deal is if the lead car catches up to you, go ahead and pull off. You know, and what they what you've got. Amazing race by lap twenty. Do you have to pull in? Um, I think there is a deal to where you got to pull in after so many laps. Because <laughs> yeah. if you didn't buy tires, you know. Yeah. Right. That, that's the thing. You're going to go out there and run on old tires, so you're going to make sure at least you're safe and everybody else is safe around you. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, there, I mean, if we can get some money together, I'm sure we can put you into a decent car. Uh, a couple of guys I know that uh, run in K&N and ARCA and... Some other stuff, they do have some late model cars that have run out there really well at Langley. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. Any, anybody out there listening right now that wants to pitch in on some, some tire money to get Patrick to Langley, uh, you know, feel free to, to get in touch with things that happen. Yeah, uh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I know I can get you tire money easily. Just getting the rest of the car under your seat. The rest of the car, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, um, you probably know uh, uh, Brian... Uh, Brandon Godovic? Yeah, yeah, I know Brandon. Raced against him a couple times this year. Yeah, he's he's got late model cars that run out here at Langley. Okay. You should, you I should, have to uh, get in touch with him then. Yeah, get up with him, see what uh, wheeling and dealing you can do. Maybe he'll give you a good deal. Never know what could happen. Have his, uh, have his dad sponsor the car, because I've seen him do that a bit too. Yeah, <laughs> alright, cool. Thank you for the... Uh background info there. Give, give you a heads up, yeah. Yeah. And just, just give us a couple of minutes. We'll think all sorts of stuff before too long. I was going to say, we start brainstorming here. You never know what might happen. Oh, goodness. You ever thought about uh, getting into, since, since you're going to be a doctor, 
ever thought about uh, doing like Mark Martin did, get a hold of somebody like uh, Pfizer, you know, for Viagra or, or something along those lines? <laughs> Not quite the same sponsor that, that Mark had, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I've, uh, I've definitely reached out to a lot of the people in the, the pharmaceutical industry and stuff, and I've Call gotten pretty Gary good Leo Connell. from a couple. Somebody forgot to put their phone. Yeah, no. Now, see, so you're going to go put your phone. I'm going to make sure I did. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you get it working? Yeah, I mean, pretty much every, every angle possible because, you know, when you do have something unique in your background, and, you know, this is what a lot of other racers tell me, too, when I try to ask for advice, is, you know, you got to find a way to, to leverage that and tell, tell a really good story. Yeah. Let me try back after the show. You, you, yeah, you got to find that niche there, you know, to get those sponsors to come to you and... and taking care of the sponsors, that's another niche. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of the challenge is, is getting someone to come on board, and then you got to figure out how to keep them there, too, so. Exactly. So. Well, what, I don't even know what time it is. 7.21. We got a few we more minutes. We got plenty of time. I, I, yeah. I made sure Patrick was going to have plenty of time. We're going to wear him ragged. Hey, yeah, we're all good here. Fire away. <laughs> How's the weather down there? Um, it's freezing, but I mean anything anything below sixty degrees to me is freezing because I'm from Florida. But it, it cooled off a bunch today. It was, it's been pretty warm this week, and all of a sudden it uh it got cold. And I see all the video of the uh, the snow going on up north of here, so I'm hoping it doesn't come this way. Uh, I think it's moving north. We've got a lot of rain down here today, but they're getting hammered up north. It was it was doing some snow in west of Newport News. Yeah, uh, yeah, I could I could believe that. It was almost like sleep today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still wearing shorts, Patrick. Come on now. Yeah, right. Not happening. I got my big winter jacket on right now. It <laughs> might only be 50. Tell him, man. I'm still wearing shorts. Yeah, believe it or not, he's still in shorts. Nice, nice. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you guys got going on for, for Turkey Day tomorrow? Big plans? Eating and sleeping. <laughs> yeah, that's, pretty, that's right. pretty much right here. So. Sleep, repeat. <laughs> yep, 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 eat, sleep, repeat. That's about it. Uh, you, usually I've got my sister coming in from out of town. Well, she she and her husband are, but they're uh, going to go visit uh, some friends of theirs over in Gloucester. One of their close friends has uh, apparently got cancer, and they're not expecting to be around much longer, so they're going to go share time. Oh, man. Talk to them. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. I, I, I My girlfriend's family's in town, so we're going to go spend that. We're going to have about a dozen people over and... Eat, sleep, get up, and repeat. You know. <laughs> there you go. Sounds like a plan. So, now, where? Refresh me. Where are you living at now? Yeah, I'm, I'm living uh, Concord, North Carolina. I mm -hmm. live with. You guys probably know Joey Coulter, races in the truck series. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up, you know, in Fort Lauderdale. Joey grew up in Miami. So a lot when we both first started racing, we used to compete against each other, and uh, definitely stayed in touch over the years. And when everything happened for me this year and I knew I needed to, to be up here in North Carolina, him and his uh, very gracious fiance both both took me in, so I've kind of been uh, bumming on the couch with them for, for a few months now, but they actually headed out of town to go dirt racing about an hour ago, and so I'm having Thanksgiving with the neighbors tomorrow, so. Well, I seen a picture, I was, I was actually looking on your Facebook, and I seen where you guys went down to 311 and ran. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, Joey ran, ran 311 earlier this year and won. I think he's heading down to Swainsboro uh, tonight. They have a big race going on this weekend. Oh, cool. If, I, if I'd known you had nothing to do, I'd have invited you to come on up here and spend some more time. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's, it's way too convenient to be able to walk across the street and get some turkey, so. Uh, oh, no, no, that's way nice. What are you talking about? Yeah, no cleanup, no prep. It's, uh, it's actually a perfect deal. Oh, yeah. Hey, you, you could have been just as informal as we were out at the Martinsville, you know, no big deal. You just come on up and take and eat, grub out, relax in a recliner, wake up in the next couple hours and, <laughs> and repeat. Yeah, there you go. We had a pretty good time. I mean, that was, that was my first time going to Martinsville and definitely a racetrack that I, I want to race on someday, whether whether it's in a late model stock or, or a cup car. I mean, I've always uh, loved playing that track on the video games and to get to go there in person and see it. I mean, it, it lived up to its reputation. They have awesome racing there. I, I tell you another track that would be fun to race at too. I don't know if you ever been to it. Was be Rockingham? Never been there, but yeah, that would be a blast. I've I've gone around that track a few laps with. Uh, oh God, who was it? Um, um, Mike. Oh shoot, he used to race trucks. 
Mike Skinner. Skinner, yeah. He and I took some laps yeah. out there in a truck, and I tell you what, we stopped at the top, and it, that bank was really strange. I thought that truck was going to roll over. <laughs> was, it, uh, was it Kansas and Kane that had the really good race there, the last cup race they ran? I believe so. Casey Kane or Matt Kenseth at Rockingham? Yeah, they were like nose to nose coming across. That place, that place was cool. I mean, that just goes back to, you know, two different corners on both sides of the track, really wore out, slide around. I mean, those are those are definitely the most fun racetracks you can uh, you can have a product on. You would like Richmond. Yeah. If you're a product of the short track, you would really like Richmond. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's, here's another thing about Rockingham that's really strange is when you come out of the corners, you actually transition, you're going, you know, curving and you're leaning to the left and you actually, when you get to the flat part, you actually roll and it kicks you back to the right toward the wall. And if you're not really catching that, you can be riding the wall too close and come over at a little transition point and all of a sudden you're into the wall. And that's it, yeah. Yeah. I think that, that kind of reminds me uh, one of the other tracks I got to go this year with Iowa and coming off the turn two there, the banking kind of runs it up. And then all of a sudden it's like you drop down a hill going onto the back stretch. And if you're not careful, you can kind of jump over that hill too quick and get the car light right into the wall. So that's cool though, that's cool. Well, if you come to Langley, I'll show you the area. If you want to get airborne, we can fix you up. Oh yeah, well, what do you got around there? Well, down, down in turn four, there's actually, there used to be a really big ditch there. It's not as bad anymore. But actually, on one of the late model races when I was running out there one night, I had to dodge somebody and shot down, and I cleared it, and I didn't even realize I went across it till somebody said, wow, that was really cool. How'd you do that? And I said, what? <laughs> you said, you went right over the ditch. I said, I felt I was running through grass. I didn't realize the ditch was there. It just cleared it, you know, like a, oh, what, uh, Dukes of Hazard type movie or something, you know? <laughs> That's when you know you did something awesome. Is when you didn't even know you did it. Somebody had to tell you. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But, then, then you're like, I meant to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was. It was planned that way. Yeah. Right. But anywho. Oh gosh. Um. <clears throat> so we got we got to hook you up with somebody in the in the pharmaceuticals. They've always got lots of money to spend on advertising. Oh yeah. It, it, you know. I learned so much this year about how even at MWR how they kind of activate their sponsorship and stuff. There's a ton of cool ways. You know, Brian Vickers partnered with uh, with Janssen Pharmaceuticals and they did something with Zalto with his blood clots and and that was really cool because it you know personally meant a lot to him because he's affected by those things. So right. uh, you know, racing is is really cool for for companies trying to raise awareness for for different kinds of platforms. It's not just about you know going to the store and buying Oreos anymore. You can use racing for so many different things that uh, you know can have a positive change in the community and everything like that. And uh, at the end of the day, we get to go out there and and beat up a bunch of race cars and try to win the race. So uh, you know, yeah, talk about Brian Brian's commercial down here locally. I, I see it quite often. But what kicks me is that they, I had one day, I was sitting there, just finished watching, and the very next commercial was the thing about the lawyers talking about if you had problems taking Zeralto. <laughs> they put it back to back like that? Yeah, I so said, this is really sucky. I mean, here you got somebody nice. promoting it, then you got somebody right behind it and demoting it. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's a tough balance to strike right there. I've seen, I've seen that commercial too. Oh, gosh. But anyway, let me go ahead and let you get going, and I'll, I'll get back up with you some more. i got to get you up here. Every once in a while, we have a uh, charity event at the uh, AIK go-kart racing place. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm, I'm an expert at beating up go-karts, so <laughs> whenever when you have something like that, just let me know. I'd love to make it up for it. So. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we, yeah, we have a lot in common there. Yeah, last, last, last race we had like that, our team was winning, and... The cart died, and they didn't even have a backup cart. We were pissed. Ah, uh, seriously? <laughs> seriously. Yeah, that's that's messed up. We we had a charity race. Have you guys ever been to the GoPro over here in uh, in Charlotte? Is that the one? Um, it used to be downtown indoor. No, no, that one's still there. I think this one's an outdoor one. I think they built it a couple of years ago now. I'm. I don't think I've been down there yet. Me neither. To yeah, that one. There was a. We had a charity race uh, a couple months ago. It was for the Daryl Gwynn Foundation, and uh, my team. We led most of the race, but the deal they had worked into it. You guys should should do this too because it helped them raise a lot of money. 
Um, you could spend, I want to, I want to say it was either ten dollars or fifty dollars. I don't remember now, but you could, you could pay to have someone ahead of you in the lineup put a lap down. Ooh! <laughs> oh hell! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, can, boy. I, find some, I can, I can find some. Two minutes of the race, the front office looked like the stock market. I mean, there was <laughs> people in there with money throwing it at the lady behind the counter. <laughs> Everyone by the end of the race was probably like twenty laps down from what they started. I mean, it helped them raise a lot of money. It was a cool deal. That would be fun. That would be yeah. That would be really fun. That would be pretty cool. So that's cool, man. Let me know. We'll work on it. And uh, for everybody out there who wants to follow along, you know, I'm on Facebook, Patrick Star Foley, 97 Patrick Star is my handle on on Twitter and Instagram. Definitely have the website too. So come check it out. The next the next couple weeks and a month or two will be really interesting to figure out what we're doing in 2015. So can't wait to get it all figured out. All right. Well, you have a safe holiday and uh, um, be good. Don't eat too much of that neighbor's turkey. <laughs> no, don't worry. We won't do that. But I uh, hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Everyone out there listening, have a, have a great Thanksgiving. And talk to you guys soon. Thanks for having me on. All right, All right we'll be you. seeing you. Talk to you later. All right, have a good night. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye. Yeah, he and I sat down after uh, Martinsville, the Saturday race, and had some supper and really, really good conversation. Um, I think we were there for two, two and a half hours. <laughs> He seems like a really good kid. Really young and very he is, he is. really smart. I mean, hey, you went to Harvard. I mean, you don't get to go in there just uh No, that's a big that's a big deal. Harvard's a really big deal. Yeah so. and, and Mike's try to get him hooked up with somebody in the pharmaceutical world would be good. So who else do we got? We got We got Derek calling in, hopefully he's at seven thirty. It's seven thirty two. Well uh uh Oh, he tried to call me. <laughs> oh, what tell? What'd you do? Finally, put your phone on silence. Like yes, you? I did. Okay. And it was zero minutes ago. <laughs> oh, he probably saying, "What's the number again?" Actually, I should just go ahead and just straight up call him. But that would probably freak him out. Could you, um, oh, oh, okay, so he's. Uh, there he is. Hang the damn thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Let's Talk Racing. Hey, what's going on, Terry? How are you? Doing good, Derek. How's Turkey Day coming up for you tomorrow? Uh, it's looking good right now. We got a bunch of snow coming down, and uh, me and a bunch of friends are out to dinner, just hanging out and just watching the snow. Um, where are you at right now? Uh, we are at a, a hibachi place. I'm currently watching a bunch of food get cooking for me. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I... he doesn't know that you went up north. <laughs> oh, I'm in Maine um, right now. I'm in Biddeford, Maine. It's um, uh, it's probably only like 20 minutes from New Hampshire. Oh, okay. So you're up there where all the snow is coming up that way. Yeah, we got about eight, eight inches, ten inches or so coming tonight, so it could be pretty interesting. <laughs> could be worse. Could be like Buffalo have a few feet coming in overnight. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. I got snow wheel. I'm ready to go. There you go. There you go. I'm going to go back to um, the Midwest. I'm going back to Iowa on Christmas and do some snowmobiling. I'm jealous. Yeah, that'd be a good place to go. I want to get out to uh, like Idaho and. Uh, Montana and all those places and go riding someday, so we'll see if I can make that happen. But for now, I'll just do the uh, the back known, the main, and have some fun. There you go. Isn't is isn't Brian from that area? Didn't he have his his wedding up there in Idaho? Yeah, Brian Brian Scott's from Idaho. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I remember that, and because uh, I used to live up in Idaho, Idaho at uh, Mountain Home area. So Derek, on your off, you're, you're you're down on your off season. You're back up home, getting ready to gearing up. Are are you going to go back spotting this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually just signed a contract extension with our team uh, for at least the next two years, and then they have the option on me on the third year. Um, you know, I'm just really looking forward to a lot of stuff. You know, I'm going to be playing for Brand Jones in the Truck Series next year, and um, you know, I got Kyle and um, <clears throat> Cup and Nationwide again, and. 
probably, um, you know, fills the slots whenever, you know, Kyle's not running the nationwide races. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good things going on over at Ganassi Racing and uh, with our whole team, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but I def- I'm definitely looking forward to the off season. You know, I-, I love what I do, but it's always nice to get a little bit of a break and get with the fan and everybody. Yeah. So do you, what have you been hunting? I know you said you were going to do hunting. What have you been hunting for so far? Well, I've been hunting hard, actually. We've been, uh, we've been doing a lot of deer hunting. I've seen a bunch of deer, but, you know, since now I'm, you know, I used to be from Maine. Um, you know, when I come up here now, I have to have an out-of-state uh, uh, hunting license, and um, <clears throat> I'm only allowed to shoot a buck, and all the deer I've seen so far just been those. So I've been waiting patiently, so um, me and... Um, uh, my girlfriend's dad and uh, her brother were all going up to uh, their their camp uh, tomorrow afternoon after Thanksgiving. So we're gonna go and try to see if we can snag the big one. But I actually went rabbit hunting today too. So that was that was a little bit of fun too. So I'm having a good time. Rabbit, rabbit hunting's fun. I enjoyed that when we did that. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish I knew what I was in for. I didn't really realize that they were going to be going that fast and, <laughs> and try to shoot. I, I think I shot more tree than I shot animal. <laughs> My, I remember the first time my father went uh, rabbit hunting. He, he, the first one he aimed at, he got. But the thing was, the only thing was left was a head and a tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that doesn't give you much to eat right there. Yeah. yeah. Now, how long have you and your girlfriend been together? Uh, me and my girlfriend have been together for about six months now or so. Any, 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 anything going to be happening? Right, or make sure I said it right, or else I'd get smacked in the face. But is, is she right there? Yeah, she's right here. Oh, is she listening? Yeah, uh, no, yeah, should I put her on? No, 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 no. I was going to ask you, no, is there no. anything special happening around uh, on Christmas or Christmas Eve between the two of you? Uh, nothing special like I think that you're asking about, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... Not yet, right? You know, yeah, it's all, it's all a good thing. See, I'm just glad that I finally get to be up here and you know, spend some time with her and her family and my family and... It's always all good things as long as you're getting to be with people you want to be with. So, is she is she from that area, Maine, up in that area? Yeah, yep, yep, she is. What what does she think about you running all over the place and with all the stuff you do? Uh, she is. I mean, she's a real big fan of racing, and you know, she follows every week, and she has a fan scam thing, and she listens online every week. Um, I'm sure she'd much rather that I be around more often, but. Uh, you know, she's still a big supporter of what I got going on, so uh, I can't ask for any more than that. Um, spotting for Kyle Larson, uh, um, and, and I got to ask you this: He's a dirt guy. He came out of sprint cars and midgets. Not too much experience with the spot, with you know, having a spotter. How's he been able to handle that? And how do you can control him? You know, spotters usually got a little bit of control in there. Uh, and I'll let you go on that one. Um, you know. Honestly, at the beginning of the year, it actually went a lot easier than I expected. You know, we had some test sessions and stuff like that, which normally I don't go to. Um, so, you know, with him being a rookie and being new and stuff, and with some things that I do different than some other spotters, you know, uh, I went to those. And, and now, I mean, me and him have an amazing relationship and a friendship. Like, you know, I just helped him move into his new place. And, um, you know, he, and he, he really trusts me, which is about the biggest thing that I can ask for because, I mean, I want him to be able to, you know, look forward and not have to look backward. You know, I want to be able to handle everything for him, just let him handle, you know, turn that wheel. Um, so, you know, coming from the dirt and stuff like that, you know, he had, uh, I don't know, not, not a struggle, but, like, when we went to, El- <laughs> went to Eldora, you know, we, he got the lead and then we got the caution and they lost the lead to Pueblo. And I just kept telling him, I was like, hey, relax, relax. You, know, you ran down from the straight, you got 15 laps. You know, we got play time, and then after the race, you know, we ended up knocking the wall down about 75 times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and then him and I, we rode together in a uh, rental car back to Indy because we had, you know, practice with a nationwide cup car the next day. And I was told, I was telling him on the way back there, he's like, they, they have a nickname on the team for me, and he said it to me, and he's like, just, I don't mind saying it on the way because I know all you guys. He, he calls me, they call me Daddy for some reason. I don't know why, because I'm... Not old, I'm not, you know, I don't have a lot of kids or anything like that, so, but he's like, uh, he's like, Daddy goes, you mad at me? And I was like, I was like, no, I was like, but how many times do I have to damn tell you to freaking relax, you know, and take care of it, and blah, blah, and he just started laughing, he's like, I'm sorry, man, he's like, this, this is my thing, and I'm, I'm just trying so hard, and blah, blah, and, um, you know, but he, he is great, you know, he's handled everything so well, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm really glad that we have the friendship that we have now, because it's just made 
so many more things easier going forward. I mean, this was way more of a year than I expected. I mean, I, I thought for sure we'd win a year. I mean, win a race. Um, you know, and unfortunately we didn't do that. But you know, we we contended a lot more than I expected us to. So I can't ask for any more than that. Right. How, how did how did Kyle feel about the racing this year? Since with everything that went on and how close, how so close he was. He led a lot of laps, but had that one thing about getting to be the leading the last lap. Well, no, it's funny that you ask that because uh, every time we would get to the lead in the cup car, um, the caution would come out. He's like, he's like, damn it. He's like, I just wish one time I could get to the lead and just lead some laps. Because every time I get to the lead, he goes, the caution always comes out. And, uh, and, and he's right. Cause, I mean, once, I never noticed him. And once he said that, I think it was after, I think just after Charlotte, you know, he got the lead and we, and we got the caution and, uh, in the fall race, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later, we had Kansas or Chicago, wherever it was that we got to the front lead, and, you know, and I noticed it was the same thing. Every time we got to the lead, we get a caution, and he was just frustrated. He just wants to, you know, he wants to be up there and contend for it. I mean, you know, he's young, he's hungry, he doesn't have a win, and, you know, he's in good equipment, and he's a great race car driver, amazing race car driver, and, you know, he's going he's gonna to win a lot of races, and, you know, that's just all he's trying to do is win. You know, he's not one of those guys out there just trying to collect the checks, but that's, that's always nice too. So, it, uh, I, I've I, I've spotted before, and I, I know what you guys go through, and I've been in the, in the driver's seat and all that, and I, I've done all that. But how impressive is he when you're on the radio with him watching there? I, I mean, I've always said a spotter has to be like another driver. And, right, um, and, and how impressive has he been? He's been very impressive. I mean, you know, meet him. You know, I'll admit, I'll be the first one, you know, super speedways are just, are just tough. And, uh, you know, he puts a lot of trust in me on the speedways, and we almost won the nationwide race uh, in Daytona in the, in the summer. And, I mean, I, you know, I'm spot my ass up. I'm trying to do the best I can for him, you know. And I just, some guys are just better at than others, you know. And I, I guess there's myself middle of the road. But um, on everything else, like all the mile and a half and the mile tracks and all that stuff, like, I just feed him full of information and all, you know, and he wants lap times. As once he gets separated from somebody by a couple of car lengths, he wants lap times every single lap. And uh, I do, I do my best to try to, you know, you know, give him the lap times and try to give him information. I let him know as soon as people are moving around and, um, you know, where people are running and uh, the times that they're running, if they're lane higher, half lane higher, and, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, and, and every time that I've, I mean. That, and I can't be any more thankful for that because, you know, he actually does put a lot of trust in me. And, and you can see that just from on top of the spotter stage. So I'll say, he could come off the floor and I could say, hey, you know, the leaders are running about half the lane off the wall uh, from entry to one all the way around and pulling down late center or something like that. And uh, and he'll go into one, that corner of that lap, just after saying this, and uh, and he'll do it. You know, he, he wants to find the speed. You know, he puts a lot of trust in me to know that, you know, the people that I'm watching, you know, have the speed and, he doesn't want to waste, you know, his time. He doesn't want to waste our time. He's just, he's just trying to win, and you, you, you can't fault anybody for that because, you know, that's what we're all trying to do is to win. He seems like he would be the type of guy that you have to almost back him down a little bit, almost calm him down, let him save the car a little bit more. Uh, um, has that been an issue with him? Uh, probably, I mean, not a whole lot. But I will say probably the first half of the year, was a little bit of like calming down and, you know, uh, more so like, you know, letting people go, you know, if someone's faster behind you and you're early in the race, just let them go. Don't, don't pressure them and, you know, and ruin, you know, ruin your race and ruin your tires and equipment and stuff like that. Just let people go and just make sure that you got someone to, to race on at the end of the race. Um, but then at the end, towards the end of the year, you know, we'll get to a couple of races and, um, you know, he'll even say, you know, I'll tell him last time and stuff. And he's like, I know I sound slow because I'm just riding right now, taking care of it, and I'm like ten four months, he's doing the right job, you know. So you know, he's learned a lot just just in that year, and I think that goes to show, you know, why he's a rookie of the year by a landslide over anybody else because he just he takes care of his equipment, he does a really good job, and you know he gives good feedback, and you know he deserves everything he's gotten. You know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this. Cool, yeah, and I, it, it, it looks like you're going to be with him for quite a while. So you're probably going to get to see a little bit of history here. Uh, I really hope so. I mean, I'm just fortunate that the team kept me around because I mean it wasn't it wasn't his choice, you know. And um, it was the crew chief and the general manager, and 
all them as their choice. You know, they kept me around after, uh, you know, I only spotted for one, you know, last year. Uh, and then, you know, you know, they decided to extend my contract. And, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, we made the best of it. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of it because if I was, and I don't know where I'd be right now, you know, hopefully I'd have other <laughs> opportunities. But, you know, I don't want to be anywhere else right now. I'm just glad that, you know, they think I've done a good enough job. And, you know, I was trying to do a good enough job for him. You know, Kyle actually made a comment at Texas in the fall. Um, we hang out a lot, and, you know, his girlfriend uh, pregnant, they're, they're due with their first child in the next, you know, three to four weeks or so, and we're hanging out in this motorhome, I'm staying there, and uh, we just kind of watched the TV, and he said, uh, he goes, Daddy, he goes, are you going to retire with me in 20 years? And I just kind of laughed, and he's like, he goes, no, really, he goes, I don't want anybody else, you know, he goes, you're all I know, he goes, you know, I want you to be with me, he goes, hopefully you'll spot for you know, my son someday, so. I kind of thought that was cool whether it happens or not, you know, but we just, we got a really good friendship and, um, you know, we do really well together and, uh, you know, we, we take the job serious when we, when we're there. So, uh, just really looking forward to the years to come. Now, now, I think it's really cool too. You can tell him I said that too. And, and he should keep you around for at least the next 20 years. Um, what, how do you feel, I don't know if you watch the, the races later on when, when they replay them. And, and they start talking about you personally. How do I what? When, when, do you ever get the chance to watch the races after the race is actually done where you can sit at home and relax or in a motorhome or whatever? Um, do, you, do you watch the replay of the walk, the races? Uh, sometimes. I mean, like, if I'm, uh, if I'm staying with him, if I'm staying with him, then, uh, you know, sometimes I'll be able to, uh, you know, go back to the motorhome and, uh, you know, check out some reviews and stuff like that. We'll kind of laugh about some stuff or, you know, there's some stuff that maybe we should have done different. Um, but, like, if, if I'm going back to the hotel, then you don't really get to see a whole lot of that. But, you know, we'll talk on the phone after. We don't live very far from each other, so we get together during the week at least once or twice and, you know, just hang out and sometimes we'll go over racing and sometimes we don't. Um, well, it's really a better bond than probably half the spot I've had with their drivers, so for that I'm thankful for sure. Yeah, with what I'm saying is a lot of times when the commentators are talking about the drivers and then you know that sometimes they'll listen into conversations and then of course they mention who the spotter is and things like that and I'm just wondering if you ever notice the people come up and say, hey, we heard you were getting talked about during the cup race or, or something like that. Uh, yeah, like a lot of times after the race, you know, like uh, my parents are watching the race and they're listening on, you know, on their computer and, um, you know, my girlfriend's listening, and I got some friends that listen and stuff like that. And uh, I don't really worry about it, so to speak, you know, when I'm doing my deal because I'm worried about what I got going on. Um, but it's cool to know that, like, people are like, hey, you know, we saw you on TV, or, you know, we uh, saw your name across TV, or what, what you said to Kyle, or, you know, stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, this is a, this is a professional business, and, you know, I try to be professional as I can about it, and you know, once things are done, you can kind of laugh and joke about stuff, but in the meantime, you just got to, you know, take the job at hand and go from there. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to ask you this here because I, I kind of know the, the, the answer to this, <laughs> um, um, but I'm going to let you tell the viewers. Um, you guys are up in them spotter stands all day, and, and I mean, you guys are usually up there four or five hours. Well, now we are. Um, you know, like, last year wasn't so bad, but now that we're starting to do... Uh, now that we're starting to do um, qualifying and stuff like that, we uh, yeah you know, we don't get a whole lot of time. Like I'll probably see. I mean, I probably only get inside the track to like see all the crew guys from either Cup or Nationwide Trucks, or whatever, um, on like Thursday or Fridays, and then I don't see anybody until uh, you know Sunday morning because we have our our team meetings and stuff before the Cup race. So um, it's, it's definitely gotten a lot more hours for us up on the spotter stand, but, you know, that's, that's our job. So, I mean, if, if you don't like it, then don't do it. If you're going to complain about it, then don't do it, you know? Well, no, what I was going to ask is how many how many tracks have put bathrooms up there now for you all? <laughs> uh, not very many. Uh, <laughs> well, I know you and I actually talked about this at Martinsville. Yeah, I hope I hope Phoenix Raceway isn't listening to this uh, broadcast, but uh, their spotter stand is absolutely the worst spotter stand to spot at, but they actually put bathroom stuff on top of there and that's probably made them one of the best ones for sure but uh, besides any other track you know we have to go down a level anywhere to go so if we're under caution 
you know, tell Kyle sometimes that, hey, you know, we, um, you know, that, hey, we're, you know, watch your mirrors, I'm going to go down and, you know, go to the bathroom real quick and be right back or something like that. But for the most part, we, we just try to hold it. But <laughs> I'm hoping that most spotters here will try to get it from bathrooms. <laughs> Get him a little bag to. Uh, I, I was on, wondering. On Shark Tank. I've seen it on Shark Tank. They have the thing that if you're traveling, where you can strap it to your leg, and if you got to go, you got to go. You, you got to just keep on digging. So. I think actually, you brought that up last year um, at Richmond. I think it was the fall race. <laughs> yeah. It was the, the spring race. One for one, and we had depends on the car. And I even told our PR lady, I was like, "Oh, do we have any depends on the truck?" I was like, "That would be perfect for me to try. Is I'll put it on and wear it off." You know, I'll, I'll pee in my depends. And uh, this year's kind of laugh, and I was like, I'm oh, serious. Like, I'll put the depends on, and, you know, I'll, I'll pee. I'm not going to go number two in or anything, but I'll, I'll pee, and I'll try to test, test the product. Yeah. You know, they, they just all kind of laughed, and they said they didn't have any. And I was like, well, I was like, that's kind of a waste for the sponsor. I was like, I want to, you know, try the equipment out because I'm the perfect candidate to do it. <laughs> Now and you are you you really, literally are being up there. I, I know I joked with you at Martinsville about uh, you know with uh, I saw some of the guys pulling out chairs and trying to get some suntan in the, in the middle of everything. Now let's let's flip over to your racing. I, I know you don't get a lot of chance to do it. Uh, you got something already started working on for this coming year? Uh well. <laughs> I don't want to say no. I'm not going to race next year because my girlfriend's sitting next to me, and <laughs> she's actually been wearing me out about the last week, making sure that I'm going to do it. Uh, but yeah, the plan is to still run. I'm going to probably do something a little bit more uh, easier, not so much money and not so much headache, just to kind of make it more fun. I mean, it is one of my only three weeks off a year that I get to do something that I like to do, so I'm probably going to make it a little bit more fun. Um, but then I bought. Uh, but then I, I bought my uh, my cousin actually a super late model, and um, they're getting that race to race next year. So I'm really looking forward to like being being kind of a, a team owner, so to speak, and you know listen to how he does on Saturday night races and stuff like that. So I'll still be part of something. I'm hoping to still get my still hoping to get my one race in a year, and, and um, you know, if I can ever fill in the slots anymore than that, I will. But one race a year makes me happy. So <laughs> actually moved the 252 to our August off weekend, so that, that's good. Oh, they're cool. Yeah. We have to, well, shoot, I was going to say get you up here for the Hampton Heat for late models, but uh, late. the uh, the the, uh, the only people that are off that weekend is usually the truck guys. The truck guys? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Timothy Peters usually comes out and tries to run it. The, uh, oh, are you talking about the uh, Virginia Still Runners 300? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he did pretty well last year, I think. I'd like to have Kafka back out too, because I remember when he was out there running in the K and N. I think that was what back in 2012. Right. Yep. But anywho. So anyway. Um, a couple things, yeah. Huh? A couple things, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so so we let him go. I think his girlfriend. Yeah, let's go. I, I gotta go home. I got, I got family coming in, so. All right. You want to say bye real quick? Let her say, say bye to the viewers. Say. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. We've got a full of food here, so. Oh, gosh. Uh, Y'all go ahead and have a good time, and I will catch back up with you later, I'm sure. All right, that was great. Appreciate you guys having me. You guys have a great uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow. Thank All right, you too, you too Derek. Bye-bye. You guys too. Thanks. Yeah, when uh, we are at Martinsville, was talking with him and, and, and he and I were always texting back and forth trying to get up with each other and finally usually it was the best time to get a hold of him was in the mornings when everybody's coming before in before you, anything yeah. actually is going you know uh, was it on Saturday when they had the, the trucks and the cup guys racing and practicing and he was spotting for both and I was watching the guys up there with umbrellas and with with chairs, it's almost like you're out at Nag's head, you know, with people they, they were out there getting tans and oh you know, god, yeah. resting. Uh, and it was that weekend was a great weekend. I mean, there wasn't a cloud in the sky anywhere. You know, you took and roasted your hooties off. Oh yeah, that's one of the few times I've been up there in the fall race to be in the seventies. Yeah, it's usually pretty cool up there, but. <laughs>
This is like the spring race snow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get on out of here. Um, cause like I said, I got family coming in. Anything new happening in NASCAR that you know of? Racing nah, world? About the the battle at the beach is they're not going to run that anymore. The um, they moved the can in race over to New Smyrna. I haven't heard anything on the modifieds yet, but that's the only thing I've heard. Hmm. No, nothing else. I haven't heard new formats yet, or I haven't heard any rule changes because the rule changes or anything. Are still waiting to hear about those. So I haven't really heard anything. So it's been kind of quiet, which is kind of nice. I know well, they, they've done two out of the three banquets. I think the other banquet's coming up here soon. Yeah, the top banquet. Yeah. Uh, first week in December, I think. Vegas. In Vegas, yeah, I think it was like December fourth or fifth or something. Something like that. So. Well, All everybody, right. hopefully you'll have a nice Thanksgiving. Don't eat way too much. Or, oh, everybody will. Or if you do, make sure you have planned for it ahead of time. <laughs> Wear your stretchy pants. <laughs> and, set, and, set, and, and set your scales back 10 pounds tonight. <laughs> wait, wait daylight saving time. Right? Yep. Are you You're talking about the to tool? Yeah, I got it right there, yeah. Give me that thing. That's not a tool, that's a paper clip. That's not a paper clip. Paper clips are round. That is not round. I don't know what it is. It's for ejecting floppy drives. Oh, and okay. CD, or excuse me, CD and DVD. CD and DVD ROMs? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, everybody, have a nice Thanksgiving, and we'll catch everybody next time on Let's Talk Racing. You want to say goodbye? See you, you later. Have a good one. You just going to sit there like a turkey on the I still That too. Yep. See you later. Later. <laughs>